Good day, yet another broadcast of OSNT. Today we have a very illustrious South African artist here in the studio. Last night she had a wonderful concert. And the aim of today is to speak a little bit about her fabulous, to I dare you, New York twang career, <laughs> but also a little bit about Nidhi Immelmann, um, who was most definitely a legacy in this African musical year. So I invited today Professor Nicole Fulhun, the chair of the Odeon School of Music, to lead this interview with Jean Minit Sylvier. So, Professor Nico Fulhun and John Metzlier, welcome today at OSM TV. I give the floor to you now. But you are obviously an illustrious African artist, which you are. But I think you have a new um, identity because you're also an illustrious New Yorker, <laughs> from what we have heard, and your, your, your accent and, and also your wonderful fine playing. Um, I almost I, I think back of. Uh, on a program which I nowadays follow on, on the new classic station WPSR, uh, which is called From the Top. And it almost, it almost feels to me that I'm interviewing such uh, brilliant young musicians because this is what the program is all about. There. It's an American program, on, actually, it comes from, from National Public Radio, I believe, in which they interview up and coming young artists. And uh, this is how I feel today because we are really privileged to have you with us. And um, for various reasons, you've come to present a very special concert which we have dedicated to the memory of our very fine piano teacher, Neki Immelman, who happened to be one of your five big piano teachers and who had a, a wonderful influence on your life. Um, but before I come to this, um, you have been here about, you started your studies with us almost 20 years ago. I think this is a, there's a calculation error somewhere, but nevertheless, I have to believe it. But ever since, um, you, have, you have embarked on a wonderful career. And I think our viewers would perhaps like to know if you would like to just give us a little synoptic overview of what happened to you since you've left us. Uh, around about 1994, I think. 93, 93. indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, well, it's been a rather unusual career mm -hmm. uh, in many ways. Uh, I, I left South Africa for the University of Michigan and worked with fellow South African Anton Nell there. Um, completed my studies, uh, left for Indiana University for a while. And uh, after finishing uh, my postgraduate work at Indiana, I had a, a, a very comfortable life as a, a solo pianist um, until I met the Swedish baritone Håkan Hagegård, who pulled me from my solo career into doing the last five years of recitals with him. And so the involvement in the world of opera and art songs started. And these days it's um, fairly evenly most of the time divided between um, concerts with singers and, and solo recitals and oftentimes combined recitals of half solo and half with voice, which is a rather delightful way to make a life. <laughs> yes, and you're resident in New York now. I am. <clears throat> I've been in the city for about eight years now and um, I've never quite felt home in any city in the States until um, maybe about four years into my residency in New York City. I came back during the summer for a brief period of time. I'm rarely there during the summer times. And as I drove into the city, I thought, well, it's home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I was sort of surprised by the thought, but it's, it's been home since. Yes. yes, I think of myself, and I also share this with the sentiments of a erstwhile friend of ours, uh, who always said, he should have been born in New York. Because it's such a vibrant place. It is so, it certainly so, is. so wonderful. And it, you know, in terms of what you have um, also told us about your activities there, it is, a, it is a very full and enriching life, and we are really, really, very, very proud of you for having achieved all of this and having presented it to us. Your program last night was also, to my mind, indicative of many things that you have almost put together um, in, in, as a tribute to Nettie, of course, and in terms of um, your association with her and in current developments, uh, mm -hmm. developments following from that. Um, could you give us an idea of how you actually, what brought you to this very special project last night? 
It was a, a sort of rather organic process between thinking of, of works um, that would have meant something to Nikti, um, <clears throat> as well as works that, that represent me as the, the artist that I've developed into. Um, a large part of my life consists of doing a, a lot of contemporary new music, um, and I wanted to include something that's on the newer side, although the Obanberg hardly can be described as, as new music these days. <clears throat> um, I mean, the Prokofiev was one of the, the last things that I learned in South Africa before I left for the States. Um, Schubert was one of Nitti's favorite composers, but um, it's also something very dear to me. My mother sang Schubert songs to me as a child, so Schubert, were, Schubert was my lullaby. Um, and it's also, of course, something that I do a great deal of with singers. Um, and, and the Debussy was something that's been with me through my, through my whole life, and I've also worked um, with Nitti. Yeah. So it was, um, it was really a combined effort between who I am and, and yeah. what she's allowed me to become. Yeah. I think that came very good, quite well through the program. Uh, the, the wonderful mixture of uh, intellectual components and also the artistic component and the expressive component and the diversity of expression that you, that you showed gave us an indication of what you have become. And now I want to want to perhaps concentrate for a moment on, on this particular force, the one that actually opened, opened your horizons and set you free to, uh, to develop and, and so on. Neti Pamama, our esteemed teacher. Your recollections of her, <laughs> it's a little bit one, but I think there are certain, so many, much, many things one can say about her. But That's um, so true. we find, for example, that um, she is now passed away for more, a little bit more than a year now, but it is as if her presence is still with us. She has been such a, has been such a powerful and dominant Certainly. figure. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, because you've worked intimately with her for a while, and um, obviously there was a great influence coming mm -hmm. from her. One of the, the, <coughs> the most, I think, indelible marks Niti left on me um, was this, this aspect of independence. Um, I mentioned last night she didn't just train my fingers, she trained my mind, and, and that's really what she did. Um, she, by the time I, I arrived uh, in her studio, my, the technical aspects of her piano playing mostly was already in place. Um, she and I did a lot of discussing about interpretive ideas. Uh, she always allowed me freedom to try whatever crazy thought I had, um, would discuss it with me, uh, never sort of enforced her own opinions and her own ways of looking at things, but always encouraged me to find my own way and, and to convince her that that way was working. Um, and uh, I mean, of course, as you do with your piano teachers, we, we became pretty close. And, um, when she was such a part of my life here, part of my family's life here, that um, it's it's really it's it's a it's a family member that will always be a part of me. I think you will concur with this. Is that I think two things that stand out in my mind, three things perhaps, is her an incredible involvement, as she said, mm -hmm. with her students. It is of a nature and of a. Of a you know, an intensity of agree that is that is seldom encountered, mixed with her uh, incredible knowledge of her of her subject. I mean, she not when she was in music very well, she edited oh, yes. many things. Uh, yes. Neil, her son, told me about this. How she was actually familiar with a vast range of repertoire, yeah. and obviously this this wealth of experience combined with her involvement with students, obviously made her what she, what she is. And then the third thing, um, to my mind, is in terms of personal conversation, I also have a deep view of faith. I think you know, put those three things together yeah. and you have a very, very, very special person. Yes, and a person with a, with a remarkable depth. Uh, and yet such a, a no-nonsense attitude to life, which is one of the things that I held so dear that I knew that, that whatever she said to me was going to be the basic truth that she believes in with no qualms about it. Absolutely, yeah. And, 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 and also the fact that she, she remained active, you know, she, before she had a, unfortunately, before in the house, she was still teaching 
on a daily basis from two to six. And, uh, she wants with, uh, with, on her way uh, and, and to uh, school, walking. Um, she also read the newspaper because she cannot just walk. You know, of course not. It's a waste of time. <laughs> then she, she, she stumbled, tripped over something, and she fell down and hurt her leg quite badly. But went on and teach throughout the day until six o'clock at night, realizing then that she couldn't move and he phoned a colleague who she knew had a station wagon. And he, he brought her the station wagon to go to the doctor and they, decided, they discovered she was broken her femur, so you know, so, and you know the fact that she's she has persisted in giving lessons throughout the, the afternoon and then producing all the all the A plus plus candidates for the uh, for the ice and the drone and the other Rated examinations. And, and it's an ideal that I think we all can strive to to have such a full life. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it is. It has been clearly demonstrated to us that that this force has been a really, really vital one in your life. But you've also had, of course, a wonderful experiences with Anton Mel, which we know really, very well, and then the great Anton Dressler. The uh, uh, the principal figure of the famous was our previous year was at the start of the Something about those two gentlemen? Anton, I think, was the perfect person um, to, to lead me into life in the United States. Um, I mean, of course, at 18, when you arrive, um, in a new country, a new culture, there's no fear. You think you can conquer absolutely everything. <laughs> and Anton did nothing to discourage me from conquering absolutely everything, <laughs> or at least attempting to. And whenever you know I would, would, would not succeed in doing such things, um, he was there for me. And um, also, I mean, we had great discussions about music, and Anton has an encyclopedic mm. knowledge of yeah. the repertoire. Um, I, I certainly learned, uh, it's, it's unbelievable what the man knows. I mean, we've always joked around and said that uh, if the composer's next door neighbor didn't know him, Anton probably did. <laughs> it's really a remarkable knowledge. Um, well, that, that completely rubbed up onto you, that <laughs> attitude and that, that vibrancy of the man. And the thirst to, to know more was, was really something that, that he installed. Um, Menachem was, in my mind, still sort of a musical grandfather, both me and his wife, um, and demanded only top level playing at all times on any instrument. Uh, we used to complain about the pianos in the studio because we felt that they were always uneven and problematic. And, and he would just look at us and say, assume the fault is yours. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get on stage and look at piano, everything's yeah. fine. And that was sort of his general attitude to making music. It's, there is no obstacle. You yeah. simply do what your, what your musicianship asks you to do. And, and I think every pore in his being breathes music. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just such a remarkable man. He's also somebody who never played in a lesson. He never touched the piano. Uh, he would sit in a chair and explain or sing what he wanted, but he never wanted you to imitate. And that's, I think it's a, it's a highly unusual teacher who does that. Mm -hmm. But that allowed all of us to develop in quite independent artists. Yeah, yeah. And of course then he uh, gave you both, uh, I should say, insights and perspectives on both solo and, and change music, mm -hmm. because he's obviously equally comfortable with both. And I hear that he's still actively involved in the uh, Oxford Summer School of Music Ladies, has been working with Neil and um, his son as well. So it's, yeah, it's, it's almost as if it's a, it has been a well-rounded trip for you in terms, of, in terms of these diverse influences, not all of them such quality influences. Yes. And we really commend you for what has become of you in the last 20 years. Wonderful, rounded, mature, sophisticated artist. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Please come again soon. It's my joy. <laughs> All the very best. Thank you.